This is the finale of season 2 part 1 and we are talking to architect Karan Desai architect Jay Shah architect Karan Daisarya and architect Bhavik Mehta about things you should not say to an architect let's go and check it out This is architect Karan Desai and I'm super excited to be on this platform today with Sagar and Jay and Karan and my cousin Bhavik let's look how uh interesting this is going to be i hope this is funny and uh interesting for everybody who is going to be listening to this hi guys this is architect karan daisarya the design studio head of daisarya associates um really looking forward to this fun session um fi arch has been uh, pretty revolutionary when it comes to uh, catering to uh, some of the thoughts design processes and information for students so i think uh, if this is going to reach to a uh, a uh, a uh, platform where we all want to be heard uh, then this is something that we can give back to uh, the design fraternity and the architecture industry so looking forward hi this is jay shah from uh, access architects hi i'm bhavik mehta from green squares design studio thank you sagar and fyi to invite me in this ark sagar dialogue series hoping for the fun session so 10 things you should not say to an architect can each of you share one incident which happened which happened with you which was very funny and you don't want it to happen again okay so there's this thing when uh we were doing a project and usually the thing is that we would want our clients to be equally involved in whatever we are proposing and whatever we are doing for them so uh we started off on a wrong foot i guess but i guess uh, because he was also a friend i just wanted to like do it nicely you know and after a point where you know i was almost thinking that this may not go further okay but having said that we were still working and uh, there was this one time when i said that listen you know what uh, we need to call it quits i need to walk out of the project and let's clear our dues and everything So he tells me, uh, "Tumne kara kya hai yar?" I was like, uh, "What do you mean?" <laughs> so he's like, "Ke sari uh, requirements ghar ki maine tumko di hai. Fir jo bhi tiles wagera select karne gaye, wo maine select kia hai. Jo bhi tumne swatches wagera banaye dewal ke upar, usme se color to maine select kia. So sara selection to maine kia. Tumne kya kia?" I was like, "But fool, wo pandra so colors me se char colors dewal pe kisne dale? You know?" <laughs> you have ten thousand shops in the market to go to that one shop and select four samples and tell you that okay, go and buy this. All right. Uh, this is just I don't understand what people think about it. You know, it's a uh, I I didn't respond to that at all. Okay, I left it there and I was like, you know, boss. मतलब ये आदमी को मैं explanation भी नहीं दे सकता. Let just go. You know. Sorry, I'm sure people have had like for the funnier experiences, but yeah, <laughs> I don't know about intense. funnier, but this was this was definitely something which is very similar. I I, I think we've all had such uh, equations where we either work for the family or we work for some relative, we work for some yeah, friend, man. and my God, the the whole idea of that overlap of the personal and professional, it has never worked for me. I don't know about mm. others. but uh, mm. it has not really worked for me and that actually brings me to uh, my point of uh, a very i had a very close relative okay so ek to kya hai na first only um, i have to go through this whole um, i am i am a product of nepotism no because my father is an architect so i have to be very very uh, um, you know sugar coated with everyone with how i'm dealing with people and also i had this person who came to me uh, very very like close relation so uh, he got an entire set of an uh, holiday home bungalow designed okay uh, till like the concept was passed and then uh, we were doing the working drawings and all of that and uh, uh, we are going on site and uh, he's like are na mai sorry he said in gujarati but it, it basically meant that uh, he sold off that plot already so there was they were not going so wo hai tarah ki unfortunately there are a lot of moments where consultants or an architectural consultant is also treated at par with a vendor as a vendor you know ki ha theek hai like uh, the idea that architects and you know consultants are very replaceable it is fine 
so that mm-hmm. is something in general i i would not want it to happen uh, to anyone not yeah. just me but to anyone but you know karan to that sorry i don't know if we are just like going away from this i've just realized that people treat us like that because we let them treat us like that exactly. you know uh we've just had a very recent uh, client who who i let my guards down like you know because i wanted to treat it as a very personal project okay and by doing so somewhere i realized down the line that i put my value down in front of them so as much as they would respect uh, we've got at the same time we are doing four more projects okay and everyone is so much more respectful um uh, they they value your time they know that okay you are a designer or professional whom they've gotten on board okay but this one client you know uh i don't know what went wrong that uh, what went wrong i know that it is my fault that i let them treat me like that you know if uh, and you know i've i've been told this a lot of times that your professional life should be different and your personal life should be different even if you're working for a friend or a family but keep professionalism separate do not uh, mix the two you know and i guess the the moment you do that okay the moment you're not professional is when they take you for a ride okay i i had a very recent experience like uh, after like publishing all these projects and all the uh, awards we received uske baad mein i received a call uh, a client who is a uh, like very nearby uh, uh, place uh unhone bola ki i wanted you to design i want you to design uh, five bungalows at a time of my friends in my house and uh, the carpet area is 4000 so uh, give a good quotation so i gave him a good quotation karan knows like what is my charges and all so it's too low like what we are doing right then also uh he just after receiving it he called me and he said uh kuch to reasonable kar do and i bola reasonable means what uh, what is your expectation to bolta hai ki 1 lakh per bungalow <laughs> so i was oh shocked. god <laughs> this is like <laughs> never ending you know <laughs> yeah yeah, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is damn funny yeah. oh, i i i have probably something to uh, I, I'll, i'll tell you obviously all of us have had a, a mad amount of experiences just uh, with regards to uh, whether you call it respect or you call it uh, you know financial sort of uh, not being compensated enough and stuff like that for our efforts and uh, one thing which i realized over time was uh, it is partly to do the with the fact that we as architects are always very emotionally connected to our work so uh, you know beyond the point where all like listen we want to do the work for the work forget the money aspect of it and uh, what i realized is that uh, like you're not going to have a uh, anybody else uh, whether it's a vendor who's selling you concrete or any forget anybody who's going to say listen i'm going to make a loss but i i want to get uh, attached to this Mm-hmm. um at best they'll say listen i'll make less of a profit or whatever because i want to get attached to a project and uh i realized that first i realized that you know there's a problem which needs to be solved and mm-hmm. uh, inherently i tried sort of doing that and i realized that that's not happening um and one thing which now we do uh, is i have completely moved myself out of the commercial discussions uh, uh so one of the and it, it it one of the things that really help here is that i'm very clear i'm like i'll take care of the design and that's sort of my baby and obviously we have a few associates in the office who etc do that but uh we've kept us you know an associate who's been with us for 25 30 years uh who we sort of demarcated they handle contracts they handle payments etc etc because i think that separation was absolutely necessary for anybody so uh, you know whoever's working on the project should not be handling anything commercial on that project because that to me is a recipe for disaster uh and and uh I, I think as architects, we've sort of, at least I have learned over time that uh, you know we can't keep making the same mistakes over and over and over again. 
So I I don't know if this will work for you guys, but at least I I think it worked reasonably well for us. I I I can't un- unfortunately afford to pay another associate to discuss discuss the fees. uh as as yet <laughs> but no no but i don't just you guys i'll i'll tell you what so uh you every office would have certain benchmarks with regards to this is what we are looking for so the associate is not necessarily making up the fees you have certain standards set up listen this is the size of the project this is what our fees are this is what our scope of work is and you have a you know approximately 10% 15% up you sort of quote and you get down and that's your bottom line yes or no so the only difference is that when you're sitting on the table yourself having these discussions and someone's like are you know make it a little more reasonable often what happens is that you get emotional about it which uh you know unfortunately hurts us only in the long term so if we want to make sort of world class firms it costs you know to be able to do that so yeah. how do we make sure we sort of get paid reasonably at the same time we do the best work feasible also i should tell you that the fact so we've got an accountant who does all follow ups so for like four follow ups i'm not involved then the associate gets involved and you know after like 10 follow ups and involved I'll tell you the amount of bandwidth that has sort of opened up to get out of payments, contracts, like that entire thing. Uh, and yeah, I, I realize I'm really lucky that you know we have that uh, little infrastructure available, and not everyone um, sort of might have that. But I'm saying even if there are two people in the office, the person who's designing don't have them. Not negotiate. It's it's literally uh, it's literally that because uh, I think. we have a little bit of a weakness when that happens which i think is the reason we sometimes produce the work that we do and why we're so passionate about it but i think uh, we should make sure that we're not being taken advantage for it also so uh, but concluding i think uh, uh, concluding your first question uh, it basically meant the thing that we should not hear is sir kuch reasonable kar do <laughs> so that, that is the conclusion <laughs> yeah that that might be the whole title of the show ha ah, yes so, so apparently karan his question doesn't end here. the whole this question runs throughout this entire topic the whole discussion yeah, know, that we are having right now it's so, the first thing so uh, you know the okay just to make it a little lighter okay is when somebody says are you an interior okay I, dude what do you mean by are you an interior are you architecture okay, every architecture have you heard are you architecture <laughs> have you heard that Again, they uh, they like, ask, are you so, engineer? Sometimes they ask, are you so, engineer? So I'll be like, no, I'm an architect. Okay, it's so like, acha, okay. And then the other thing is, uh, in on a lighter note, again, when they introduce you to other people, he's our interior. You know, I was like, no, I'm your architect who's doing the job. Even if I'm doing your interiors of the house, I am still the architect. Okay. <laughs> uh do respect okay anybody out there who is an interior designer who is listening to this show i have like no hard feeling but for me i'm saying that you need to tell me that you're an architect you know? correct correct so, it, I, um, I, i still get to i still get to hear this uh, from uh, like distant relatives and also people who still don't know what actually architects do exactly. i still hear beta mba nahi kiya no no nahi zarurat nahi padi oh my god Many times we have to educate our client, right? and uh, that's why our charge is like this. That's also we have to mention something. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, huh. I am I am very uh, like I am having a very young practice. So I just uh, jumped into practice now, but I am sure that these all experience have come to me already. Mm, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. We don't. Doubt. This is the first experience. Exactly. It's like the first thing the client is first going to do this one. my my client was ki main aapko pay kar dunga and you will run away so like dude why i'll run away <laughs> i want whole of my payment i don't want just the advance <laughs> oh, i design for you and i'll take the whole payment i'll not run away in the middle <laughs> so okay i'll start with my first question like yeah. 10 things you should not say to an architect the first question from a client to an architect are you being sarcastic i had one experience with this yeah so uh, uh like sometimes what happen like cl- because all these references and uh, uh, now these pictures and everything is available on 
uh, web, right? So they come up with uh, references, right? And then they started saying, uh, this is what, ya fir kuch apne friends ke pe ya kahin pe dekha. So they, they come up with those ideas and they started with, uh, saying that this is what we want to make. This is what uh, will look good instead of what you had designed and something, something. So what I give answer in terms of like a sarcasm, I always tell them, uh, will it suit your with your personality or will it suit, will it suit with your status or something like that? So <laughs> then he will start thinking, Ki, oh, isne kya bol diya? <laughs> so again, then we have to educate them like uh, this is not going to fit with the entire theme. So it will not be part of this particular reason, though it looks good or bad. That is the second thing, right? But yeah, sometimes we have to be sarcastic to uh, hurt them in a sense where uh, they actually start giving you respect and then they actually start understanding your designs and everything, right? So that is necessary in that sense. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So anyone wants to add in this? I've never experienced something with where <clears throat> someone has thought that I'm saying something sarcastic, uh, except the fact that I think they're not, uh, clients are not much aware of uh, costings and budgets when it comes to materials. So uh, <clears throat> I think, uh, you know, it majorly means that, you know, when a particular price is given and, and they have a, that reaction that, huh, what? So that, uh, <laughs> because they're not very sensitive to the costing, uh, they do not, you know, they feel that we are, no, you know, but in fact, I have asked my clients a lot of times that are you being sarcastic, you know, because <laughs> where, where you are like bang on working with your aesthetics and everything. Okay. And suddenly there is like an ultra super modern chair that they will propose saying that let's do this chair. And I'll be like, dude, are you like, are you real? You know, Matlab, kaha ye chair ka design or kaha apna ghar ka design dono mein taal mein nahi hai. what are we talking? So yeah, but never otherwise. Yeah, never otherwise. Good. So and this kids, kids have other kind of demands. Some of this stuff's gonna happen. He should, he should totally know yeah. what his father is going through. <laughs> it, it seems like this is. It is definitely getting part of that. Yeah. So uh, involvement of these kids in the project, like the client always involve their kids into the project, where we have to be sarcastic, right? I want blue color in my house. Anyhow, you have to do it. So then we have to really. really you know, we're doing a project right now. Yeah. More than the client, their daughter is so clear of what she wants in the room. You know, I am hoping that they will never listen to this and watch this. Okay. <laughs> but. Trust me, I would sit with the daughter and finish the room faster than sitting with the parents and finish the room. You know what I mean? And this I'm also, I'm not taking that as a particular example. I'm saying in general that sometimes kids are so particular of what they want and they're so sure. I think if you just follow their, um, uh, their brief, designing is done. You know, then there's no reverse forward. Very few kids, of course. But yeah, it's amazing to come across such kids. So have Instagram and uh, social media uh, got like they got awareness because of that? Uh, see, it's not just Instagram or social media. Today, the kids have access to the entire internet. You know, there are a plethora of options and apps that are available for them. You know, oh, there are games that allow them to design their rooms and, you know, pick up furniture pieces and colors and all of that. So uh, I think today's generation is way, way, way ahead than what we were back in our age, you know? So it's amazing. Like, you know, Pinterest is just there. People can just, they'll just type kids bedrooms and they'll get everything. YouTube is there. So it's just amazing how these kids are so uh, sure of what they want. So uh, the next question, I think uh, the, when you, we all were young architects, we must have heard this. I cannot believe you are charging so much for just a few drawings. The computer. Wait, wait, wait. What are itself. you talking? What are you talking? Young architects. I still hear that after 10 years of practice, yeah, yeah. like yeah. this, this yeah. thing doesn't end. So there are a few people, then you just let them go. Of course. But uh, yeah, we've had such people here. Yeah. It's madness. We had a project outstation spoke, uh, the fees were frozen. And uh, again, like, you know, you don't, 
behave professional enough because you give the benefit of doubt to the opposite person uh, i went there spent 3 days there came back it was on war footing the team is working here okay and then he says are mujhe ye pasand nahi hai wo pasand nahi hai falana nahi dekhna nahi so i was like you know what chhod de yaar matlab tu kar le because i don't think you need a designer you need a contractor who can just design what you want all right uh, he's like acha okay so i was like okay fine but you know x amount needs to be released for whatever work we've done for you he's like yeah karan but uh, whatever you've designed we are not going to be using it so why are you charging us i was like but i'm charging for my time that i've spent on you Three days at site, one whole week in Mumbai, working constantly on your project. He's like, yeah, but you know, what is the whole point of it? We don't like it. We're not going to be using it. Whatever, whatever. And that person has still not paid us. That's that's. It's it's just amazing. Yeah. He's like, hey, but the uh, sari design, so I gave it to you, na. I mean, I have told you that I have to use this wallpaper. I have to paint this. I was like, Diwali, you have wallpaper and paint. It will be, na. Or what will it be? You know. मतलब I I just don't get this यार I just I just want to add to what Karan is saying actually this is very very common in the developer lobby as well okay yes. I think uh, 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 Jaiwai will second my thought that uh, we end up giving an entire proposal they एक तो they make us all compete now see I'm obviously talking in a, a reference of you know practices who are catering to developers directly as well so uh, दे एक तो दे मेक अस कम्पीट की हाँ भाई जो मैक्सिमम एफ एस आई और एफ ए आर कंज्यूम करेगा हम प्रोजेक्ट उनको देंगे दे डोंट गिव अ डैम अबाउट हाउ दैट प्रोजेक्ट लुक्स लाइक हाउ द बट आई डोंट इवन वांट टू टेक नेम्स सो आई एम जस्ट गोइंग टू से दैट यू नो इन रेफरेंस टू बट इज दैट प्रोजेक्ट इवन ह्यूमन टू लिव लाइक यू नो इफ वाई इज इट एवरी टाइम अबाउट द कंजम्पन ऑफ द मैक्सिमम पोटेंशियल एंड द मैक्सिमम प्रॉफिट दैट इज चर्न आउट ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट सो आई फील when we don't do that when the intention is more design centric when the intention is more conceptual and they don't sort of resonate with it then they start negotiating on a lot of other things i don't want to actually talk about money i want to talk more much more in reference to uh, you know how people are uh, sort of treating architects because you know jai bhai i just recently came across my team just shared this some photo with me भाविक भाई 999 में आर्किटेक्चर एक्सटीरियर रेंडर विद डिजाइन एलिवेशन द इशू विद आर फ्रिटर्निटी इज नंबर वन द इशू ऑफ सीओ ए विच आई गोन वेरी ओपन अबाउट दैट इफ यू गोन लेट एनी वन एंड एवरी वन डू वट दे वॉन्ट टू डू आई मीन इन टर्म्स ऑफ डिजाइन इन टर्म्स ऑफ आर्किटेक्चर और एनीथिंग देन आई मीन यू कैन गिव समन हु इज इन फर्स्ट और सेकेंड ईयर एम बी बी एस टू डू अ हार्ट सर्जरी नो so then why is that the case with architecture so i think uh, that's a constant battle because i have literally been told this that uh, are aap uh, design kar rahe ho you're giving these many drawings itna hi to karna hai to aap itna charge kyu kar rahe ho so again i again like i said i don't want to go to the charge bit i'm talking about the attitude yes. the inculcation of that attitude towards an architectural consultant is something which in india we have not seen like uh, rather i'll not say india in big metros i have not seen i have gone to bangalore i've gone to nagpur and they treat people with utmost respect and uh, uh, i'm not sure of what the situation no way that, no way what are you saying you got a lot of respect in nagpur so, i am from I'll, nagpur i'm practicing in nagpur no way let let me tell you this this is very interesting so uh, what i have found is that uh, whenever you are an import whether that's domestic or that's international so every time we travel and whatever work we're doing so we're doing work across uh, and now we're doing work internationally wherever we travel uh, we get a huge amount of respect people sort of spend that time like you know there's workshops for two three days the, you know everybody is there they are at full attention etc uh it's it's kind of funny uh every time you're sort of going outside your base you tend to do that uh, uh I I can totally understand that those who are actually from that place uh, don't have that same uh, opportunity. Uh, and the funny thing also is that uh, I think that uh, you know much to your point of what's happening, you know, beyond because uh, you know both the practices are are sort of are not young practices. I would call I, we we completed forty years uh, in twenty twenty. So. you know the funny thing is a lot of this stuff is stuff which that never goes away so like what uh, karan desai was saying about like you know i'm a 10 year old practice i'm like 
you know what let it be a 60 year old practice let it be a 100 year old practice that's not going away because that's sort of the attitude of uh, you know the value of service or the value of labor in our country i i don't think that's going to change unless there is a demand supply uh, mismatch so it's it's one of those things where uh, you sort of learn to live with it and uh, you know you 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 try and figure out how to work within that more than anything else he he's, he he just said it in such a positive way just so that no one else is getting demotivated to continue architecture <laughs> it's a very good thing listen a lot of these guys are students on right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> i i genuinely feel uh, i i i this is just i i guess who i am inherently i just feel like uh, you know this is where we are uh, we don't have options up beyond sort of working where we stay right so uh, you know you stepping stones and you sort of try and find a way to kind of get it to work in a way where you are comfortable and the guys opposite are comfortable but uh, if that's not happening you know how long are you going to be pessimistic about what's going on here it's not going <laughs> to it's not going to last very long with the kind of uh, stress we are anyway under <laughs> we need to find a better way i i oh. have a good incidents to share yeah so a uh, one developer came to us and uh, he wanted a uh, kind of a floating come a uh, development and a, a huge scheme right and then uh, he started it like uh, like we had first initial conversation on development projects and how how we will go about it at all so then he started it like uh, there is one more a singapore based architect who wants uh, he wanted to involve in the project right and uh, then uh, we came up to the stage of fees and uh, where i had to release the contract so at the time of conversation he started it like this matlab mujhe pata hai he was uh, giving one cr to design only a kind of a master plan and uh, then he was asking me to give a reasonable quotation because uh, i'm the second architect who is going to actually who were going to deal with it but project right so that was kind of a, a level uh, like they considered us like so that there were the this fees always matters yes and i always like being an academician i always teach to my students that always have your uh, i mean give your weighted uh, always always stand by your side don't never degrade yourself by uh, reducing your fees right otherwise the people you will get your client you will get like that only where every time you have to compromise with the fees mm-hmm. so don't do that mm. so that is that yes. is true. that's true yeah the other thing that is really annoying mm-hmm. what you should never do to an architect once you hire them is send reference images of other architects okay but okay let's talk about this thing i we are doing this project and this client comes to us saying that oh you know we've i've seen so many people and this and that we really like your work you are eccentric and all of that and we would want a current day side touch to our project i was like great like you know awesome and then what happens 15 days down the line uh he sends me uh a screenshot or a post from a couple of my contemporaries okay so for a first few times i was like acha chalo he's sharing no problem very good nice whatever after a point i was like that dude if you want that person's job to be done why are you why have you come to me just go to that person and get it executed no no two designers are going to think alike okay given the same space okay for example bhavik will design it completely differently to jay and to karan and to me right so i mean like design is very 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 subjective and nobody is right or wrong right but agar aapko uska kaam pasand hai to uske paas ja kar ke kara lo agar aap mere paas aaye ho to main jo bol raha hu matlab mera sath mein aap journey karo na baki logo ka references dal dal kar ke matlab khichdi banana hai kya idhar you know he stopped after that okay he stopped after 10 days okay he by the way out of out of kya uh, bolte sheer uh, aadat he must have sent me one more reference of somebody okay and then he message sorry sorry you know it was just like by the way that i sent it ignore the message okay 
it was fun because you also have that rapport with the client it is nice but in general if i have to say to people that if you are hiring an architect okay you've hired him for his aesthetics for his design uh, uh design ideology and his concepts and all of that then have faith and trust in him yaar like he'll do a good job for you you know मेरे मेरे सेम केस में उन्होंने मुझे वो व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप में से निकाल दिया इट जस्ट पिक मी आउट एंड देन दे शेयर दोस इमेजेस इन बिटवीन देम दे डिस्कस एंड दे कम टू द ऑफिस टू डिस्कस विद मी दैट वी वांट लाइक दिस सो इट हैपेंस दिस दिस हैज आई आई शुड दिस समथिंग व्हिच आई रियलाइज्ड आई एम एक्चुअली रियली बैड एट ओवर टाइम वेयर लाइक आई रिफ्यूज टू टेक any end user work so if you are going to stay in the house or you're going to stay in the office uh, or villa or whatever it is i uh, have realized that that's actually a lot more about handling the personality rather than the work and i have found that personally i'm not great at that like i can't uh, maybe i'm not good at the communication or whatever i'm i i feel uh, it's very difficult for me to sort of work like that and uh, so uh, again uh, there, there are so, uh, other guys uh, so uh, dads with me my first cousins with me etc so they are better and sort of they they handle it but what i uh, realized over time is that uh, it's it's one of those things where when you are doing any work for an end user a uh, unless they and you are in sync in terms of the aesthetic that you are sort of thinking about or what you enjoy what you don't enjoy what type of design do you enjoy uh, so we've so sort i've of done some work but that's when you know uh, someone has been like listen you did this i absolutely loved it you know can you do this for me and then i'm like very clear listen then i'm going to do it my way i don't want you know i want a pink wall here and i want a gray wall here that all i'm not going to so uh, i i i think it's really funny they they don't teach this in architecture school and they really really should just uh, managing uh, relationships or managing uh, personalities i have found is so incredibly important in doing uh, work like that because obviously uh, you know for them that's going to be their place so especially if it's someone's house you can't tell them you know like the kid says listen i want this you can't say no no you should not do that same thing to a lesser degree if it's an office like they are going to spend a lot of time there etc so uh while the layout and stuff like that is you know it unless you are in sync with regards to what they are looking for and what you are sort of thinking and how you are thinking i i find that it's it's one of those things where you would rather uh, sorry i i would rather sort of step back uh, because it's not uh, it's not one of those things i do particularly well uh, and it's just something which uh, i feel it's you know there are others who are much better at it let let them handle that rather than sort of me getting involved I, that's just uh, how i feel but i i do feel that in architecture school there's a whole bunch of stuff they should be teaching that they don't teach us i i i'm a i'm a big big so i i try and sort of uh, you know do as much as i can with regards to sort of meeting deans and sort of trying to help wherever i can but i i i feel there's a big gap there in terms of uh, what they should be teaching and what they are teaching when someone sort of moves out and that's not necessarily to do with even like architecture as architecture i think it's so much broader than that so, so uh, yeah. sagar we are going to go endless on one one question or you're not going to get done yeah i think <laughs> i think this will be a long interview and i have to like uh, make it in parts and upload it oh baap re thank you for tuning in for this podcast i hope you enjoyed our talk You can also follow us on our other social media platforms such as Instagram and YouTube. We post content daily there. The link is added in the description.